we've got the next three chapters today. So the first one, the wormy spaghetti. The next day, to pay Mr Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big long ones and put them in a tin and carried them back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock, she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered in tomato sauce and sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr Twit, poking around in it with his fork. Oh, it's a new kind, Mrs Twit said, taking her mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. Mr Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato covered strings around with his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs Twit said. She was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it rather bitter, Mr Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. Buy the other kind next time. Mrs Twit waited until Mr Twit had eaten the whole plateful. Then she said, do you want to know why your spaghetti was so squishy? Mr Twit wiped the table tomato sauce from his beard with a corner of the tablecloth. Why, he said, and why it had a nasty bitter taste. Why, he said, because it was worms, cried Mrs Twit, clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. The next chapter is called The Funny Walking Stick. To pay Mrs Twit back for the worms in his spaghetti, Mr Twit thought up a really clever, nasty trick. One night, when the old woman was asleep, he crept out of bed and took her walking stick downstairs to his workshed. There, he stuck a tiny round piece of wood, no thicker than a penny, onto the bottom of her stick. This made the stick longer, but the difference was so small, the next morning Mrs Twit didn't notice it. The following night, Mr Twit stuck on another tiny piece of wood. Every night he crept downstairs and added a tiny extra thickness of wood to the end of the walking stick. He did it very neatly, so that the extra bits just looked like part of the old stick. Gradually, but oh so gradually, Mrs Twit's walking stick was getting longer and longer. Now when something is growing very slowly it is almost impossible to notice it is happening. You yourself, for example, are actually growing taller every day that goes by but you wouldn't think it would you? It's happening so slowly you can't even notice it from one week to the next. It was the same with Mrs Twit's walking stick. It was all so slow and gradual that she didn't notice how long it was getting even when it was halfway up to her shoulder. That stick's too long for you, Mr Twit said to her one day. Why so it is, Mrs Twit said looking at the stick. I had a feeling there was something wrong, but I couldn't for the life of me think what it was. There's something wrong all right, Mr Twit said, beginning to enjoy himself. What can have happened, Mrs Twit said, staring at her old walking stick. It must suddenly have grown longer. Don't be a fool, Mr Twit said. How can a walking stick grow longer? It's made of dead wood, isn't it? Dead wood can't grow. Then what on earth has happened? cried Mrs Twit. It's not the stick, said Mr Twit. It's you, he said, grinning horribly. It's you that's getting shorter. I've been noticing it for some time now. That's not true, cried Mrs Twit. You're shrinking, woman, said Mr Twit. It's not possible. Oh yes, it jolly well is, said Mr Twit. You're shrinking fast. You're shrinking dangerously fast. Why, you must have shrunk at least a foot in the last few days. Never, she cried. Of course you have. Take a look, look at your stick, you old goat, and see how much you've shrunk in comparison. You've got the shrinks. That's what you've got. You've got the dreaded shrinks, 
Mrs. Twit began to feel so trembly, she had to sit down. I think there might be something wrong with that chair. Next chapter's called Mrs. Twit Has the Shrinks. As soon as Mr. Tw Mrs. Twit sat down, Mr. Twit pointed at her and shouted, There you are, you're sitting in your old chair, and you've shrunk so much, your feet aren't even touching the ground. Mrs. Twit looked down, down at her feet, and by golly, Mam was right. Her feet were not touching the ground. Mr. Twit, you see, had been just as clever with the chair as he had with the walking stick. Every night when he'd gone downstairs and stuck a little bit extra on the stick, he'd done the same to the forelegs of Mrs. Twit's chair. Just look at you sitting there in your same old chair, he cried, and you've shrunk so much that your feet are dangling in the air. Mrs. Twit went white with fear. You've got the shrinks, cried Mr. Twit, pointing at his finger at her like a pistol. You've got them badly. You've got the most terrible case of the shrinks I've ever seen. Mrs. Twit became so frightened, she began to dribble. But Mr. Twit, still remembering the worms in his spaghetti, didn't feel sorry for her at all. I suppose you want to know what happens to you when you get the shrinks, he said. What? gasped Mrs. Twit. What happens? Well, your head shrinks into your neck. And your neck shrinks into your body. And your body shrinks into your legs. And your legs shrink into your feet. And in the end, there's nothing left except a pair of shoes and a bundle of old clothes. I can't bear it, cried Mrs. Twit. It's a terrible disease, cried Mr. Twit, the worst in the world. How long have I got, cried Mrs. Twit, how long before I finish up as a bundle of old clothes and a pair of shoes? Mr. Twit put on a very solemn face. At the rate you're going, he said, shaking his head sadly, I'd say not more than ten or eleven days. But isn't there anything we can do, cried Mrs. Twit. There's only one cure for the shrinks, said Mr. Twit. Tell me, she cried. Oh, tell me quickly. We'll have to hurry, said Mr. Twit. I'm ready. I'll hurry. I'll do anything you say, cried Mrs. Twit. You won't last long if we don't, said Mr. Twit, giving her another grisly grin. What is it I must do, cried Mrs. Twit, clutching her cheeks. You've got to be stretched, said Mr. Twit. And I'm going to leave you on that cliffhanger today.